Let the peoples recount the wisdom of the saints and let the church proclaim their praise. Their names will live on and on. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. It's one of those days where it's hard to choose. We have two doctors of the church on the calendar. One, uh, St. Hildegard of Bingen, a remarkable figure from the 12th century who's really only beginning to be discovered. Uh, Her writings have been known for a long time, but new attention is being brought to them. Uh, A a mystic, uh, an abbess of a monastery, a great teacher of the mystical side of the faith. And then we have St. Robert Bellarmine, who was more on the theological, practical side, guiding the church through the Council of Trent. his writings are where our founding fathers got the phrase, the uh, inalienable rights that we have as individuals. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who adorned the bishop St. Robert Bellarmine with wonderful learning and virtue to vindicate the faith of your church, grant through his intercession that in the integrity of that same faith your people may always find joy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. Now the body is not a single part, but many. Now you are Christ's body, and individually parts of it. Some people God has designated in the church to be first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then mighty deeds, then gifts of healing, assistance, administration, and varieties of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work mighty deeds? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? Strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful song. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. Know that the Lord is God. He made us his we are. His people, the flock he tends. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. For he is good, the Lord whose kindness endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. Uh, 
with you a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke Jesus journeyed to a city called Nain and his disciples in a large crowd accompanied him as he drew near to the gate of the city a man who had died was being carried out the only son of his mother and she was a widow A large crowd from the city was with her. When the Lord saw her, he was moved with pity for her and said to her, Do not weep. He stepped forward and touched the coffin. At this the bearers halted, and he said, Young man, I tell you, arise. The dead man sat up and began to speak, and Jesus gave him to his mother. Fear seized them all, and they glorified God, exclaiming, A great prophet has arisen in our midst, and... God has visited his people. This report about him spread through the whole of Judea and in all the surrounding region. The Gospel of the Lord. God has visited his people. This is the fundamental difference that came about with the incarnation. This is why Jesus Christ is the singular figure in all of human history. Uh, And not just uh, uh, a human figure either, but God in the flesh. God has literally visited his people, walked among us, still with us in the church, by the Holy Spirit. It it changes everything in all of creation, that moment that uh, the Word became flesh in the womb of the Virgin Mary. We hear a list of gifts that the Spirit bestows upon people, um, prophecy and teaching, uh, but also the gift of administration, which is interesting. Father Donald Donald Sr., who's a scripture scholar, wrote a book on that recently uh, as he was studying this chapter of Corinthians. Uh, uh, Because Jesus founded a church with a hierarchy, and that requires administration, and he knows that, and so he instills in his Holy Spirit the gifts of administration. It's it's really a, a profound idea that God would be so practical to include that in the list of the gifts he gives to his church. One of the things that does not appear in this list is resurrection. You do not hear Paul saying, some have the gift of raising from the dead. Never. Jesus has reserved that to himself alone. And he did it three times when he was, you might say four times himself, although we would say, The Father raised Jesus by the instrumentality of the Holy Spirit. Uh, But he raised three people from the dead. Lazarus, we know, of course, certainly. Uh, The the synagogue official's uh, daughter, Talitha Kum, right? Little girl, arise. And this fellow uh, in the city of Nain, uh, a a mother's only child, and she has lost him, which is a heart-rending grief. But even more so in those days, as this woman would now in the culture of her time be submitted to a life of, of begging, of, of poverty, uh, you know, no support structure whatsoever. Um, and uh, if, if you can picture this scene, it, it uh, really illustrates the, the humanity of Jesus in his divinity, his, the fullness of his humanity. Uh, you know, they're, they're walking into the city and, and all of a sudden they encounter this, this funeral cortege, a, a young man dying tragically, and his mother weeping over him. And you can bet, in Jesus' mind, he immediately flashed forward in his divinity, knowing all things, to the moment when he would be there with his 
Blessed Mother standing by watching him expire on the cross. Moved with pity, the scriptures tell us. Beautiful thing. Uh, the, the pity that, and, and it's still with us today, friends. Uh, never feel like God has abandoned you. Um, I'm suffering all of this alone. We don't suffer anything alone. God is with us in every moment of our trials, uh, carrying the burden with us, right? He says, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Not because suffering is easy, but because he carries it with us. And let us remember that in all of our sufferings. Please stand as we offer our prayers. For all members of God's holy church, may the Lord help our devotion grow through study of his word and reception of the Eucharist. We pray to the Lord. that the Holy Spirit will send us out to lift up others, to serve the poor, to share the gospel, we pray to the Lord. For all those who are mourning loss of a loved one, may Jesus fill them with his consolation and the peace this world cannot give, we pray to the Lord. For this community of faith, for our Diocese of Buffalo in all of its many difficult challenges in the year ahead, for the ministries of our parish, for our parish school as a new year is beginning, we pray to the Lord. For all who have died, that God's love and mercy may surround them and bring them to the everlasting kingdom. Most especially, we remember James Bernard, for whom we offer this holy sacrifice of the Mass. We pray to the Lord. Eternal God, receive our prayers and comfort us in our trials. We ask all these things with faith and hope through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we celebrate the divine mysteries, O Lord, we pray, may the Holy Spirit fill us with the light of that face by which St. Robert Bellamin was constantly enlightened by you for the spreading of your glory through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. 
For you are praised in the company of your saints, and in crowning their merits you crown your own gifts. By their way of life you offer us an example. By communion with them you give us companionship. By their intercession sure support, so that encouraged by so great a cloud of witnesses, we may run as victors in the race before us, and win with them the imperishable crown of glory through Christ our Lord. And so with the angels and archangels, and with the great multitude of the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and a drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
the communion antiphon. We proclaim Christ crucified, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Let us pray. Refreshed by heavenly food, we humbly implore you, O Lord, that attentive to the teaching of blessed St. Robert Bellarmine, we may abide at all times in thanksgiving for the gifts we have received through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord.